Today, we'll be looking at how we're turning spider silk into a super material. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. Spider-Man is one of the most famous superheroes in the world. It's a little shocking considering that one of the more popular phobias is arachnophobia, a crippling fear of spiders. Perhaps more fantastic is that young Peter Parker, a brainy high school science geek, supposedly invented the famous web shooters and synthetic spider silk that he uses to swing through the cityscape like Tarzan across the jungle. That's how scientists have been working for decades to reproduce spider silk, a substance that is five times stronger than steel and its many superpowers. In recent years, researchers have unraveled the protein-based fiber structure to the molecular level, leading to new discoveries and new opportunities for potential industrial use. Applications for such a substance seem infinite. There are more technological fantasies, such as allowing artificial muscles for human-like motion, or ensnaring real-life villains with a Spider-Man-like web. Near-term uses could include the healthcare industry, such as bandages and adhesives, as well as cloth substitutes for anything from rope to seat belts and parachutes. Spinning Silk Synthetic Worm For more than three decades, Randy Lewis has been researching the properties of spider silk and developing methods for synthetic processing. In the 1990s, his research team was behind the cloning of the first spider silk genome, as well as the first to identify and sequence the proteins that make up the six distinct silks produced by web slingers. Each of them has different mechanical properties. So our process of reasoning was that you should take that knowledge and try to grasp what made it solid and what makes it stretchy, and why some are really stretchy and some are not stretchy at all, and some are stronger and some are weaker. Spiders are naturally aggressive and cannibalistic, so any attempt to cultivate silk would naturally result in an orgy of anarchic aggression. Instead, Lewis and the corporation have genetically engineered various species to create fake spider milk, including adding a few genes into the genetic code of the goats. The milk of the goats contains spider silk proteins. The lab also produces synthetic spider milk by a fermentation process that is not inherently different from brewing beer, but uses genetically engineered bacteria to create the desired spider silk proteins. For years, a related method has been used to make a central enzyme in cheese processing. More recently, businesses are using transgenic bacteria to make meat and milk proteins, totally bypassing animals in the process. The same fermentation technology is used by a trendy startup called Bolt Threads outside San Francisco, which has earned over $200 million for stylish fabrics made from synthetic spider silk called microsilk. The business also produces a second leather-like substance, Milo, using the underground root structure of mushrooms known as mycelium. Labs also use transgenic silkworms to create a form of composite material composed of domesticated insect proteins and spider silk proteins. Those have quite impressive properties, he said. Researchers are now experimenting with genetically engineered alfalfa. One of the major benefits is that after the spider silk protein has been removed, the remaining protein will be used as animal feed. This would significantly reduce the cost of producing spider silk proteins. Building a stronger web. The manufacture of synthetic spider silk is not a concern, but the ability to do so on a commercial scale remains a sticking point. Another difficulty is to weave synthetic spider silk into functional goods that can take advantage of the wonderful properties of the fiber. It is possible to make silk proteins synthetically, but it is very difficult to assemble the individual proteins into a fiber or another material form. The spider has a complex spinning duct in which the silk proteins are exposed to physical forces, chemical gradients, the combination of which produces a mixture of molecules that leads to silk fibers. Specifically, spider silk unexpectedly strains and bends above a certain amount of relative humidity, exerting enough force to possibly compete with other materials being explored as actuators, devices that move to perform some activity such as valve control. Studying spider silk close up. Latest molecule level experiments are making scientists understand more about the peculiar properties of spider silk, which will help researchers create materials with exceptional capabilities. For example, scientists at Arizona State University used magnetic resonance instruments and other tools to represent the abdomen of a black widow spider. They developed what they considered the first molecular level model for the development of spider silk protein fiber, offering insights into the structure of nanoparticles. What's your take on this? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you on the next one.